Please open God's word with me as we are going to read from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through to 21. I um, deeply wrestled with what do I share when I leave um, Rosebank Union Church um, in ministry after more than 13 years. And I found that this prayer of Paul for the Ephesian church, for myself and also for you as God's followers, very appropriate. So very briefly, I want to read God's word and ask you to open your heart to the Lord to just allow him to speak this morning through his word to your heart and mine. Verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The Apostle Paul comes on his knees in deep prayer for the Christians, for the believers in Ephesus. And as we read this passage, we just realize that this is a prayer that comes from his heart inspired by the Holy Spirit to come before the Almighty God to pray for God's people. I want to go a bit deeper this morning and say that this prayer is not only for the church in Ephesus, but this prayer is for you and for me and that we can take this prayer to be our very own prayer and even go to the place where we pray this prayer for others and for ourselves. What is Paul praying? And very briefly, I want to leave, and there are many more, just a few of the content that comes to your heart and to my heart. He prays in verse 16, and I want to repeat that. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, that is God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. What is Paul praying here? He is saying that you and I may come into the space where we draw from God's strength again and again. This very same Apostle Paul that wrote this letter is also the Apostle Paul who wrote the letter in Corinthians and this very same context and concept 
of receiving strength from God again and again was his own experience. And I briefly want to take you and me there. You remember in 2 Corinthians 12, He shares with the church in Corinth, and he says, I've asked the Lord three times to take this thorn away that is bothering me. Does that resound with you? And I came to the Lord, and I said, Father, please, if it's your will, take this thorn away. And he pleaded, and then the answer came, Paul, my child, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Isn't that beautiful? Although the thorn is there, although the inward trials are there, although the obstacles Come again and again, although the troubles flood in like a hurricane, comes the word of God. My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. And this is the prayer of Paul for the people of God that they may know the secret of going to the place, the throne of grace, to go to God through our Lord Jesus Christ, our high priest, and to bring whatever there is into that space and to know that God will give sufficient grace And God will give sufficient power for whatever is needed. Do you believe that? That I may draw. Lord, my prayer is that I may draw again and again from your strength. That I may draw again and again in your un limited fountain of grace for whatever comes my way. Rosebank Union Church, God's strength will be sufficient for that that lies ahead. God's grace is unmerited favor for the body of Christ in this place this morning will continue to flow in like a mighty flood and the people of God will come through again and again and again. May you draw your strength. May you draw from the wells of grace as you journey into the future. Paul writes to the Philippians on this very same theme, and he says, listen, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I know what it is to be in every situation. I've walked that walk and I've journeyed that journey, but what I have discovered that I can do everything through him who strengthens me. I can do everything through him who strengthens me. Dear friend, in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you and I go down memory lane and look into the past, even this morning you do not know my heart and I do not know yours. What is happening there in the present? And the future lies unknown, wide and open. But may I say to myself and you that his grace and his strength that held the past 
is busy holding the present, hallelujah, will hold the future. My strength will come through. My power will be sufficient for you in your hour. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Nothing Pastor Justin prayed will pluck you out of my hand. And to go even deeper that nothing in all this world will be able to separate you and me from the love that we have found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My strength, my power will all be sufficient in my grace. Paul also says, so that we may live in Christ's love. And he says here, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Isn't that beautiful? A prayer by the Apostle Paul for the people of God. And I believe a prayer that touched him deeply, that he prayed again and again, and a prayer for you and for me that we can take into our hearts, and a prayer that we must live, that we must soak ourselves in. What is that prayer? Lord Jesus, that I may live in your love. That I may live in your love. That I may be rooted. That I may be established. Because God is love. And that is the love I seek this morning. Because he first loved me through the Lord Jesus Christ. I love him this morning. Lord, that I may soak myself that I may operate my, in your love on a daily basis. In the Gospels, an expert of the law came to Jesus and he said to Jesus, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered him. He said, What do you read? And the teacher of the law, the expert says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and soul and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, the whole of the Old and the whole of the New Testament, all the writings of the prophets, the whole and the fullness of God's word rests on this commandment. Love the Lord your God with everything and then your neighbor as yourself. This is what Paul is praying for the Ephesians. This is what we are moved by, by the Holy Spirit, that we will live in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul prays here that this love for the Father, may I ask you, do you love God? With everything. Annie and I walked on the farm at Plattkloof one morning. I said, Annie, you know how much Opa love you. Yeah, Opa. Annie, who do you love? 
opa, ek het God eerste lief. Want opa het alles gemaakt op plat kloof. Hy gee die reen vir dada. And he let the onions grow. I love him, Opa. And then I love Dada. And I love Mama. And I love you, Opa. And Oma Jackie. And Oma Diana. And Opa Flip. And Impi. And Congo. And Kieter. Ooh, do I love the most this morning? And Father, if I need to come this morning amongst your people through this prayer and take the trimmings away and recalibrate and regroup and re-listen and re-take action. Like a Peter and Jesus after the resurrection. Peter, Peter. Peter, three times. Peter, do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. I love you. I am as broken as you are. I've got a long way to go spiritually. There's a lot of stuff that must still go before Jesus comes on the clouds or take me home. But this morning, to hear, and Lord, this is my prayer on this Sunday morning. This is my prayer. If you call on me, how much do you love me, Dennis? How much do you love my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that you and I this morning will respond? Our love for God is number one. Amen. With everything I have, every part, every being of me, God is all for you. And then the rest. And then... My neighbor as myself. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is everyone outside of me. Do you agree with me? My neighbor is not only my family or because I like you, because we get on together well. It's much deeper than that. My neighbor is everyone. My heart breaks in 38 years of ministry when people tell me, then, It's all over. The love is gone. Isn't that sad? The love has gone. Forgive me this morning, but my heart breaks for South Africa. Why? 
Because, my friend, we need to come back to the understanding of what this commandment is saying, that I need to love my neighbor as myself. Dennis, if you are convicted and you have unfinished business, go and make it right with your neighbor. I think that's good advice. If you've got a gripe with life, if I've got a gripe with someone or situations, and there's unfinished business this morning, I need to buckle down under the authority of the word of God, and I'm speaking to Dennis Bieselar now. Go and be reconciled and clear the air and start, Dennis, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Don't you think that is the answer for South Africa? Not tomorrow because it's five past 12. Not next year. Let me first go and work it through. Work through what? Lord, here I am. I move out this morning by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of God. And I go out there this morning and I make a U-turn and I will, by the help of your Holy Spirit, start. To love my neighbor, whoever that may be, as myself. And we will see a revival. Lastly, the Apostle Paul shares and he says in this prayer that God may fill him and the Ephesus church. And I believe this is also a word for us this morning with all of God's fullness. Isn't that beautiful? Fill us with all of God's fullness. Pride in religion is a terrible thing. Do you agree? I'm more spiritual than you. I pray more than you. When it comes to reading God's word and knowing the word, I I shine you. That's spiritual pride. I'm better than you. You know we are all children of grace, saved by grace. And the Lord Jesus Christ has done it for us all. We've got nothing to boast about or we can lay claim on. Saying that, you and I are on a journey. And my prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit afresh will knock at my door and knock at your door. And that we will be open, that he will grow us and take us and mold us and make us in what he wants us to be. God has not finished with us yet, do you agree? We're on a road. We are on a pathway. And because we're on this pathway, Lord, this is our humble prayer. As your people, we bow this morning and say, won't you come again and fill me, Lord? Won't you come again this morning and revisit me? Recalibrate me with your Holy Spirit and keep on filling me so that I can follow where you lead. I'm concluding. 
Jesus speaks to his disciples before his death in John 15. And he says to them, I want to give you a beautiful picture. And he holds this up. He says, listen, disciples, all 12 of you. He says, I am the vine. Can you get the picture? And you are the branches. He says, and that is how it is. And it's my father and your father, the almighty God, that will be the gardener. Isn't that beautiful? That will give the nourishment and trim so that the maximum can come out of the vine and the branches to bear fruit. Jesus says in this chapter, he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Is that also your testimony? Without God, you can do nothing. Nothing. But with God, all things are possible. And because that is so, here I am, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as the vine, and I want to be the branch. And what does Jesus say to the disciples? If you remain in me, and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. There will be a full crop. It will be so full that you will even be able to share of the crop to others. My friend, my plea to myself and to you, remain, abide, stay in the Lord Jesus Christ as the branch and then the fruit will come. I want to challenge myself and you this morning that we will be open on a daily basis to be filled with God's goodness. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning that we can come to you for strength, and for power to tackle and to face the daily challenges. Thank you, Father, that we can ask you this morning to lead us where we will love you with everything and go out here this morning and unconditionally love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Father, come this morning through our Lord Jesus Christ Help us to be grafted in and tapping into the vine so that we can bear fruit, so that we can grow. In Jesus' name, amen.